Japan's science ministry has compiled a map showing radiation levels in Fukushima and surrounding prefe prefectures based on results of an aerial survey. In the map, levels of radioactivity at locations one meter above ground are highlighted in different colors. Red is for areas where the radiation level is 19 microsieverts per hour or higher. The red band spreads from the Fukushima Daiichi plant to the northwest and extends about 30 kilometers. Areas with radiation levels of 3.8 microsieverts per hour or above are highlighted in yellow. Although this figure is above the threshold for designating an evacuation zone, the yellow areas on the map extend beyond the current zone. Meanwhile, light green shows levels between 0.5 and 1 microsievert per hour. They are still far beyond the annual level, which is believed to cause no harm to people. Much of Fukushima Prefecture and parts of three surrounding prefectures lie in the light green zone. Decontamination work is expected to be tough due to the vast extent of the irradiated areas. Six months after the nuclear accident in Fukushima, efforts are still underway to bring the crippled reactors under control. The most urgent issue at hand is to achieve stable cooling without increasing radioactive wastewater. Tokyo Electric Park Company, the operator of the Fukushima Daiichi plant, says temperatures in the number one to number three reactors have fallen to around 100 degrees Celsius. The temperature at the number one reactor was about 400 degrees in late March. The company has been pouring 15 tons of water into the reactors every day to cool the melted fuel inside. But this process has been producing a massive amount of highly radioactive wastewater. In June, TEPCO started removing radioactive substances from wastewater through a filtering system that combined U.S. and French-made devices. TEPCO also introduced a Japanese-made device in August. 85,000 tons of water has been decontaminated so far, but over 100,000 tons of wastewater remains to be treated. Beside the water, nuclear waste generated during the filtering process is occupying nearly 70 percent of the 800 cubic meter storage space. TEPCO says the company wants to review its cooling efforts, taking into account the amount of wastewater and nuclear waste. A moment of silence was observed across Japan on Sunday to mark the half-year anniversary of the March 11th disaster. At 2.46 p.m., the exact time the earthquake struck, people in Miyagi, Iwata and Fukushima prefectures bowed in remembrance of the victims. Memorial services were also held in disaster-stricken areas for the victims. In Minami Sandiku town, Miyagi prefecture, the 71-year-old mother of a town employee who died that day offered bundles of origami paper cranes in honor of her son. The city of Rikuzen Takata in Iwate Prefecture suffered more than 1,500 deaths. People who lost their family and friends attended a memorial service at a Buddhist temple. The main hall of the temple was destroyed by the tsunami. <laughs> In Minamisoma City, Fukushima Prefecture, near the crippled nuclear plant, residents work together to decontaminate school routes so that children can commute safely. <laughs> Now to this week's special series, Japan Six Months On. This half-year anniversary of this country's devastating March 11th earthquake, tsunami and nuclear crisis is this Sunday. On Monday, we brought you a story from the port city of Miyako about how a community in Tokyo encouraged people there to rebuild their vital fisheries industry. Then on Tuesday, we went to Ishinomaki, 
A group of international volunteers is cleaning up and repairing homes in the city so locals can get back to normal life. And tonight we'll head to the town of Namie in Fukushima Prefecture where we'll focus on one of the biggest concerns in Japan, the spread of radiation following the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The problem has sparked anxiety in the eastern and northeastern parts of the country. Japanese authorities are trying to limit the risk to children. Some schools in Fukushima Prefecture have restricted outdoor activities for students because of high levels of radiation. Playing with sand in public places has also been banned. Precautions are also being taken in Tokyo, more than 200 kilometers from the nuclear plant. Officials detected radiation exceeding the safety standard in sandboxes used by children. In some cases, the sand was replaced. In others, the sandboxes were covered with plastic sheeting. NHK World's reporter Hiroki Yashima joins us tonight from our studio in Sendai with more on the radiation concerns in Japan. Hiroki, another problem caused by this country's nuclear crisis mm -hmm. is food contamination. How has that affected farmers? They've suffered sales losses since the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi. Radiation levels above the safety limit were detected in some of their products. The Japanese government ordered the suspension of shipments of milk and some types of vegetables in Fukushima and neighboring areas. Shipments of beef cattle from four prefectures was prohibited between July and August. Farmers who worked within the evacuation zone along the Fukushima Daiichi faced even bigger difficulties. They were forced to give up everything, including their animals. But some of them are risking their own safety to make sure their livestock doesn't stop to death. Namie lies within the 20-kilometer evacuation zone that's been set up around the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. A freelance journalist captured these images in June and July of livestock living free after residents abandoned the town. For years, the main industries in the evacuated areas around Fukushima Daiichi were pig, dairy and beef cattle farming. Before the March 11th disaster, roughly 3,500 cows and 30,000 pigs lived there. When local residents left their homes after the accident at the nuclear plant, they were forced to leave their animals behind. Without food and water, many cows and pigs slowly began to die. In April, veterinarians in Fukushima Prefecture started euthanizing the animals that had survived but were weak. Then in May, the central government came up with a plan to cull livestock once their owners gave their permission. But many farmers opposed the idea of simply killing the animals they raised with care. Some are still visiting the evacuation zone to feed their livestock. 57-year-old cattle farmer Masami Yoshizawa has been doing that for months. The local government gave him permission to feed his 330 cows once a week. But in doing so, he's taken a health risk. I've been exposed to high levels of radiation, but I couldn't just abandon these cows. So I've continued bringing them food for six months. I think I made the right decision. Yoshizawa doesn't live with his family right now. He's rented temporary accommodations so he can continue to look after his cattle. He makes no money but refuses to give up on his animals. The central government sent him a document requesting his approval to euthanize his livestock. The cattle have no value because they've been exposed to radiation. They can't be sold. Still, I can't approve of euthanizing them. Yoshizawa went to Tokyo in mid-August to launch a campaign to save the abandoned livestock in Fukushima. He believes there could be a way to use the animals for research on radiation exposure. 
を失ってみんな命があり自分から死ね死にたいそんなことを動物だって人間だって思わないと思います。He made an investment in buying his cows. Losing that is a real shame. Veterinarians and humane societies are starting to show support for Yoshizawa's campaign. At some point, I hope local farmers will be able to raise livestock again. People involved in the effort started up the Fukushima Farm Sanctuary Project. The group believes it is cruel to kill cows that are unfit for human consumption. Its members want these animals to be kept alive and used for research on radiation exposure. As a cattle farmer, I'll spend the rest of my life working to help these animals and working on the Farm Sanctuary Project. Hiroki Ajima joins us again. Hiroki, what does the future hold for Fukushima farmers?、Mm -hmm. Many farmers who worked close to Fukushima Daiichi are hoping to resume livestock and vegetable farming, but in reality, the, prospect, the prospects are slim because so much of the farmland in the area is contaminated with radiation. What about other people in Fukushima Prefecture? What's life like for them? About 56,000 residents of Fukushima Prefecture are still living in shelters because of the nuclear crisis. NHK surveyed about 190 of them. Nearly 40% of respondents want the government to decontaminate or replace the soil in their towns and cities to restore the land to its pre-disaster state. The government has only recently started serious decontamination efforts. So, despite ongoing pressure from residents and farmers, it will be a while. It will be a while before people can even begin to think of the day when they can actually return home or start working the land again. Thanks, Hiroki. NHK World's Hiroki Yajima from our studio in Sendai.